the shade canopies, because I tell people this all the time when they consider, because we do a, a absolute ton of work along McGregor, along the river, um, even on Cape Coral along the river, but it, you know, it's, it's a little bit, a little bit different, but the homes along McGregor and in, you know, the central Fort Myers area, those oak trees, you can't buy. They're 60 to a hundred years old, some 120 years old. You can't buy that. And I don't care how much money you got. You throw me a million bucks. I still can't get you one of those. Um, <laughs> You know, it's like I can get you I can get you probably a thirty year old tree, but I mean you can't you can't get much more than what those are there. I mean they're incredible. Um it's truly amazing to see what those shade canopies, how they make those properties so much more diverse. Welcome to the Landscape Cafe and part two in this series. Brought to you with support from Fort Myers Garden Service, maintaining and protecting business and residential landscapes. Visit FortMyersGardenService.com or call 239-990-7494. I mean, it can be nice, but you don't have to spend a fortune to, to do a really nice landscaping, especially if you're able to get your hands dirty. I mean, you can, you as long as you have a sanctuary where you can go to and disconnect from all the craziness, I think that is an essential part of every home, whether it's a big, big home or small home. Um, there's so much peace. I don't care who you are, whether you like the outdoors or not. You know, if you don't like if you don't like the outdoors so much, you know, you can do a little patio back there and you know do sure. beautiful beautiful landscaping around it, so it still looks nice. You don't have to ever tend it. You can hire us to do it. We, can, you know, we'll take care of it for you. But um, I think that is so essential to every single house to be able to have that and enjoy that. I agree. I agree. And you know. Uh... A lot of people are into it down here. Like I, you know, I remember when Don and I first got into bike riding. Just within like a five mile radius of our house, we would just come across the most incredible gardens. I'd always have my phone with me, and I literally would just take snapshots, and I would just get inspired. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I don't want the exact same garden, but I'm like, oh my god, I really like the way they did this, or I love the way they use these plants, or I love the way they use this sculpture, and they did like a little bit of a thing here or whatever. And over time. I was able to kind of bring some of those thoughts and ideas to my own garden in my own way and translate it in. And that's been so much fun is that it's always changing, you know, and I'm always being inspired. Like <laughs> the problem so, is I love buying plants too. So I got to watch it all the time. But, I know, right? <laughs> oh my God, man. I could just do it all day long. I mean, I just love, 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 love plants. Um, I just, I'm just amazed by them. I really more than anything, I'm absolutely floored by how they propagate, how they flourish, how they can help and complement each other. Um, you know, learning about just the different plants that do better in dappled light or part shade versus sun. I mean, I've literally spent so much time creating shade parts in my, in my garden so that I could do certain plants that I couldn't do before because I had no shade. Mm -hmm. You know, it's given me an opportunity to learn a lot, you know, I go on YouTube, I read articles, you know, I, uh, you know, I've talked to you and gotten great tips from you. I mean, just, it, there's so many resources down here. There's no reason you can't have an outdoor environment space that you absolutely love, whether you do it yourself or you hire somebody to do it. There's such value in it. You know, I, I, like I literally went the other day, I went back and looked at pictures of my backyard before I did anything. And I'm like, mm -hmm. wow. I'm like, so different from what it was i mean it was just like a, it was literally a rectangle backyard with two scrub oaks and it was just plain jane and now i've got coconut palm i've got a mango tree growing i've got cherry trees i got lime trees i've got all kinds of you know beautiful plants growing around and you know it wasn't a long time i mean i've done this over the past probably four to five years mm -hmm. yeah so, so Anybody can do it. I mean, you really can, you know, you just have to have a love for it, I think, or develop a love for it. Absolutely. You know, I want to, I want to go back to something you said is as, as an artist being inspired and inspiration, that is huge and an essential part to being a creator. Um, one of my favorite places to go is Naples Botanical Garden. Um, I'll be there next Friday for their light show. Oh. It is 
it's the best Florida has to offer as far yes. as an outdoor garden that shows you all of the different possibilities that you can have in our climate. I mean, that's what I love about Naples. It's like, it so goes above and beyond. It gets into more of the learning and the teaching of and the, the showing you all the different you know, all, just all the different types of environments that you can create, subtropical, you know, more arid, Florida friendly, you know, whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's that's my go to inspiration, too, man. That is my place. I love it. And, mm -hmm. you know, what I, what I also use um, is Pinterest. So Pinterest has Ooh. some of the top creators are, are on Pinterest and Instagram as well, actually. Yes. Um, Instagram is really growing for inspiration. For me, um, those online platforms, you know, there, there's nothing like getting that clarity when you go to a garden that already pre-exists and getting right. inspiration from there um, because you're in that environment so deep and you can feel it and you can sense it. Um, you get a lot of clarity there. But um, as far as like social media, Pinterest and Instagram, um, for Katie is, is our main designer. She's our senior yeah. designer. <clears throat> and as well as um, Lindsay and some of our other designers that are you know learning from her she's always talking to hey, check out pinterest check out instagram um check even other companies too like what sure. what are they, what are they doing um gosh there's so much content that is basically just e easy and free to grab on there online mm -hmm. that it is made designing very cool because you have that just at your fingertips you don't have to get up Absolutely. and drive and yep. and that has that has been so much fun as a, as a designer myself as well mm -hmm. um having those tools and those outlets at my fingertips has dramatically changed the game because when we first started doing designs you know the there was a design community there but you know there's only so much you can do with typing on forums and how yes. limited our other platforms were um they in the last couple of years the industry as a whole has really churned up the notch. It is unbelievable because right now people are just, they're still exploring. Like the longer we have, uh, the longer we have access to all these tools and can talk to people more often, the yeah. crazier the ideas get, the more intricate the, the designs are going. Uh, it is so cool to look after what's happening in the industry right now. And, I mean, there's designers galore right now. Uh, there's really strong community that has been very fun to be a part of. So, oh, I get that. inspired a ton by other professionals and other people on their on their platforms. Well, I think that's great. Number one, too, is that you're open to being inspired by others. You know, and it, this isn't just specifically the landscape industry, but I know it's for business owners. So, in, in general. When you get into a mindset of like you're just about the competition and beating the competition, you don't open yourself up to what's possible. When you're open to getting inspired by other, you know, businesses, you know, like I I do it all the time. It's funny because it's an interesting challenge. Like for my wife, who's mm -hmm. part of my business, she gets intimidated by competition. She's like, oh, you're doing it better, and like blah 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 blah. And I'm always like, huh, how can I take what they just did and keep that up a notch? You know, yeah. like I love, I love to be pushed and challenged. You know, um, it's what actually it's what challenges me sometimes when I go and see somebody else's garden. I'm like, try to see how they did it, try to figure it out. How can I make it better in my own garden? Um, that's yeah. I mean that that is when you get that's when you become um, a real go to expert mm -hmm. in anything you're doing is when you can be open to that kind of inspiration and contribution. Really, I mean, it's all contribution. I mean, it's the fact that they're sharing it is fantastic. Yeah, you know? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Do you do you feel like the landscaping in Cape Coral is? Um, have you talked to anybody that lives in Fort Myers? Is there any difference in landscaping in Cape Coral versus Fort Myers? You know, it's interesting. A lot of the landscaping I see in Cape Coral, I'm just going to say, seems kind of a little bit more standard. It's like, it's kind of like, oh, these are what the, the builders put in, you know, like for a lot of initial landscapes until you get into like the sort of the back neighborhoods, I'll say, sort of the older homes mm -hmm. you know, where I see people doing stuff that's a little bit more, a little bit crazier. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but some of the best landscaping I've seen, honestly, has been a lot of those properties along McGregor and Fort Myers, simply because they just have the aged trees and stuff where they're able to do things that Cape Coral is not tree heavy. You know what I mean? It's a newer community in general. Right. So it doesn't have the same kind of age to it. Um, and for me, nothing beats what I've seen on Sanibel and Captiva. That's some of my favorite places to go. You know, I know some of that's been beaten up, you know, as of late, but um, those beautiful properties back there with their just vast landscapes with bromeliads and vines and uh, just all the stuff that they're doing back there. That to me is like, that's mind blowing. I've just seen some mind blowing landscapes where I'm just like, oh my God, I can't even imagine what's like to even take care of this. But man, it's got to be fun. You know? Right. Um, but yeah, I would say, I would say that um, Fort Myers feels a little bit more sophisticated in its landscaping than Cape Coral. But I think part of that is just Cape Coral is just a newer, is a newer community. Um, right. But there are people who are starting to, you know, um, do things that are definitely cool, unorthodox, a little bit different, taking chances, experimenting. I see them once in a while. It's kind of fun to see. I love it. Yeah. You know, you know it's cool. like one of those properties that people talk about because literally yeah. I've had people go, I literally have had people go, you're the house on the corner of Aviation Parkway? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's my place. That's you know, so I awesome. Be, I want to be that for somebody else. If I can inspire somebody to start gardening and, and enjoy it, Heck yeah, man. I'm all over it every day. Oh, no, that's absolutely totally awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Something you said that was the the shade canopies because I tell people this all the time when they consider because we do a, a absolute ton of work along McGregor, along the river, um, even on Cape Coral along the river. But, it, you know, it's, yes. it's a little bit a little bit different. But the homes along McGregor and in, you know, the central Fort Myers area those oak trees you can't buy they're 60 to 100 years old some 120 years old you can't buy that and i don't care how much money you got you throw me a million bucks i still can't get you one of those um, <laughs> you know it's like i can get you I can get you probably a 30 year old tree but i mean you can't you can't get much more than what those are there i mean they're incredible um it's truly amazing to see what those shade canopies how they make those properties so much more diverse mm-hmm. because I don't, a lot of customers don't understand until we you know go through the process and educate them you can't have what the guy across the across the canal has because his yard is is all open and i know it looks gorgeous but he doesn't have any trees on his side because you know he took them all out or whatever yep. the reason is and there's so much education and it's totally a different world even a few houses away from each other on what gardens can take this and can take that and mm-hmm. that's something that's something that i found that is very interesting and another difference i i think is very notable versus cape coral and fort myers a lot of that old fort myers area right there along mcgregor most of that soil is pretty black it's pretty good it's mm-hmm. good raw soil um if I'm not mistaken, all, almost all that used to be orange groves where they they had their their farms and their fields. Yeah, I believe it was. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and and actually, you know, it's funny. My mom lives right there in that neighborhood, and in the back well backyard, they had a big artesian well, um, and that was for the for the orange groves. But uh, that's just fun, fun, cool little piece of history. Yeah. But yeah, so all that area, that soil right there, most of the time it is really good, rich stuff um, in the Cape. I don't know if it's because the Cape was built up or how it all works, or they use the fill from the canal to build up the homes and the streets. I'm not sure what it is, um, but all of this soil in Cape Coral is very rocky and very, um, very filled dirt. It's mostly filled dirt rather than composted soil. It and, is, so, yeah. mm-hmm. that is. and so what we talk to our homeowners about and educate them in the process is, we need to bring in compost to amend your soil Mm -hmm. it's good to have soil that's going to dry out and move somewhat quickly like that's good we need a little bit of that because you don't want total muck you don't want 100 percent muck and where the water never drains because then you're going to root rot the plants are that quick so what we do is 
take out that field dirt unless there's way too much in the bed and it's overflowing. We bring in compost and mend it with that soil. So that way you have a little bit of that good mucky wet stuff that retains water. And you also got some of that stuff that drains water quickly. So mend yeah, those together and it makes a beautiful soil profile. Then add a little fertilizer in it and everybody's happy. Um, no, true. I, and I think you're spot on because basically, you know, uh, Cape Coral was created as a canal community. So in order to do that, they had to, you know, drain out that stuff and, and you know, and, and, and put in fill dirt and literally build the city. But it does make it more complicated to grow certain things because most things don't thrive in that. Some do OK, you know, but like you said, yeah, it definitely makes a difference to amend the soil. And there's a lot of places where I've had to, you know, play with the soil in order to get something to grow. Because literally something can be I can have the same plant five feet away from each other and they will grow completely different because of the soil you right. know and you don't think about it you're like oh it's my yard it should be the same but it's not the same all around right you know? it's not not at all it's something that's so funny is the plant it's called a texas sage oh mm -hmm. my gosh it's one of my favorite plants oh, ever. I have one. they're beautiful yeah i put five of them as my level three my top tier level closest to the house because it's going to be a little, the highest mm -hmm. um you know, only about i'm going to keep it maybe three and a half feet or so maybe four feet and it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. And my sister-in-law was here build, building our landscape. She was helping us put it in on the weekend when we were doing it. And I was saying, and I said, all right, we're gonna lay this compost all the way through the bed. We did this, we're gonna put them in here, put these here, put these here. And we started digging in the Texas sage together. I was like, oh crap, wait, all of these plants love this mucky composted soil that we brought in, except this back hedge right here. Now we need to go ahead and rake this back a little bit and, and put it around the other plants and not these because those love to drain really fast. You know, they like their water, but they like to be dry. Yeah. Um, and so, my gosh, in, in one landscape bed, even though the landscape bed is probably only like 10 by 20 or something, and there's different environments. There's different mm -hmm. micro niches of environments that need to be for different plants. And it's so important. And um, yeah. Most people don't understand that, but it's, it's extremely, extremely important to have the, the right soil of where your plants go. The Landscape Cafe is a production of Pure Landscaping and the Niche Podcast Network. Learn more about Bailey, Katie, and the team by visiting purelandscaping.com. You can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. And don't forget, the best place to rate or follow the show is at thelandscapecafe.com. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned. There is more to come.